start off by saying who do you? Like I wonder what you think. Like is this girl crazy? <laughs> For today's video, we're gonna be jumping in to my best and worst purchases in my 20s thus far. So, I was born in 94. Where are my 90s babies at? So I just turned 25 last month, but I have been told that I look very young for my age. Last week, I went to my local pizza place, and I was at the bar, and the guy next to me asked me what high school I went to, and I was like, I have a business degree, sweetie. Okay. Anywho, so I'm gonna just alternate from best, worst, best, worst. And I would just like to preface this video by saying that I am not in any way, shape, or form a spender. I am very frugal. I am that girl that buys the not name brand peanut butter, the not name brand Oreos. Like I, growing up in the suburbs, I lived in a middle class neighborhood. It was nice, but my parents just always taught me to live beneath my means. My dad definitely ingrained into me that just because you can afford a BMW doesn't mean you get a BMW. Um, people who are rich and well off get that way by living beneath your means. He really just drilled that into me. And that the more you save, the more well off you will be. So now that I have entered my mid 20s, I am trying to be at that in between place of not being a penny pincher where it's like annoying and I can enjoy my money because I work hard, but also not being frivolous and spending and buying whatever I want. I'd say I've definitely been more on the penny pincher end of things, um, but I'm trying to be more so in the middle. And please share in the comments down below right now before we continue what your worst purchase of your life thus far has been. Whether you're a teenager or in your 50s, whatever it may be, let us know. We're all friends, there's no judgment here. I'm just curious, like if it's a purse, if it's a car, uh, I don't know, I just wanna know. So yeah, okay, I'm nosy. <laughs> My first best purchase has to be these tennis shoes from the brand Ash. When I say that I debated getting these shoes for a very long time, I mean I debated getting these shoes for a very long time. These are the most expensive shoes that I own they retail for $275. I knew that I loved white tennis shoes and I wanted a thick, chunky tennis shoe that I could just run around with on a day-to-day -day basis. I probably wear these four times a week. So the amount of use that I've gotten out of these is insane. At first I thought that I wanted the Balenciaga white tennis shoes, but they were like $875 and I was like, I just cannot rationalize that. Um, so I Found a couple like similar ones that were in different price points, some Puma, some Nike, some Ash, different brands, and I like pulled my friends and I'm like, which one's the best, which one's the best? And they're like, go for the ones that you want. So um, I kid you not, I spent five months debating <laughs> if I should buy these tennis shoes for myself. So I got them and boy am I happy that I did because they're genuinely the best, best quality and I like I said, I wear them literally all the time. What I did do, however, to make me feel better about the purchase is I waited for Bloomingdale's to have a sale. They have a sale where every hundred you spend, you get 25 or something like that. So I purchased like something else for $25 and then I got $75 off. So I actually ended up purchasing these for $200. Now, for my worst purchases, one of them hands down has to be my Sony A5100 camera. I just looked it up on Best Buy and it says that it currently retails for $449, but I swear I paid more. And so I'm wondering if the price has gone down because there's new models that have been released. I'm not sure. But basically I bought this camera as a secondary vlogging camera. Uh, for the most part, I film on my Canon 70D, which I absolutely love. Um, but anywho, I've got this for going on trips, maybe just like a little vlog here and there, things like that. Um, but my biggest issue with this camera is that it overheats like crazy. I swear, I film with this thing for literally 10 minutes and it's like overheated and then it just shuts off. Imagine stopping your work every 10 minutes. It's extremely frustrating and I do not recommend this camera to anyone. Personally, I would recommend the Canon G7X, which I should have known, I'm a Canon girl through and through. I don't know why I swapped over to this. It was a mistake, but if you are looking to maybe start a YouTube channel or you just want like a smaller starting camera for anything, uh, the Canon G7X I've heard fantastic things about, so yeah, okay. Next, let's talk about a really great thing that I love. This is so freaking random. You're like, India, what is this? Great question. This is from the brand Port and Polish. No, this is, none of this is sponsored. Um, this is a pill dispenser. <laughs> I think I'm a grandma. Like, this is how you know. <laughs> 
So this is just a really cute pill dispenser that you can leave out on your nightstand or in your bathroom and it just looks cute and it's not like, you know, like an ugly grandma pill box, you know what I mean? So yeah, um, this one's great. It has a little mirror and then um, just little slots for you to put your medicine for each day of the week and um, vitamins, anything like that. And it's really, really helpful. I used to have a medication that I had to take every other day and I would get confused. Like, wait, did I take it last night? And then finally I just bought this. Um, and it's just been so, so helpful. So yeah, it's like $20. I'll link in the description box down below. It's a game changer, you know? One of my next worst purchases in my 20s was my kitchen table. When I purchased my place, I just wanted to get a bunch of cheap furniture, cheap decor, things like that, because I was spending so much on everything else. When I first purchased my place, I went from room to room, kind of slowly filling it out. And when I got to the kitchen area and getting a kitchen table, I was like, oh my gosh, like a real wood kitchen table would be so stinking expensive. Like I'm just gonna buy like a crappy $200 one on Wayfair. I think it was like 150. No, that's a lie. It was probably like 250. And y'all, it is tragic, okay? Like imagine you're just sitting at your kitchen table and you just take a spoonful of soup and all of a sudden your table just like scoots back because you like put a little bit of your body weight into it. Basically the table weighs like half a pound. It's super, super light. Um, so like if you, like scoot your chair back and get up like the table's gonna move it's just trash and like yeah it's only 250 dollars but I, looking back i would have rather used that 250 dollars to put it into purchasing an actual real nice wooden kitchen table that i could carry with me through life because rest assured honey i am not taking this kitchen table with me to my next place uh it's gotta go one of my next best purchases is surprisingly a purse, but I have loved it through and through. I used it every single day for a little over two years. Um, so I got a lot, a lot of use out of it. And it is this pre-loved, I got it from a consignment shop here in Atlanta. It is this tiny Louis Vuitton baby. Um, she is vintage and she is loved. I got her for $350, pre-loved, like I said, at a consignment shop. I really wanted a designer purse, but my like dream purses were so far out of my reach price-wise, or just more than I was willing to spend at that point in time. So I guess I got this baby when I was 23, and I've used it every single day, literally, for a little over two years, um, and just absolutely loved it. So I think if maybe, you know, your dream purse is a YSL that's $3,000, and like that's just not in your price point, Point, go to your consignment shop if you want to get something for yourself that is special. Go get yourself a pre-loved bag, a cheap Target bag that's $20, whatever it may be. Wear it every day and then once you can finally afford your dream bag, go for it. Splurge. Like, treat yourself, you know? Which leads me to... My baby, I actually did not purchase this myself. Daniel got this for me for Christmas this year. My fiance, for those of you who don't know. Um, and I was just in shock. I have thought about and looked into getting this bag for at least a year, um, but just couldn't quite commit to it. And he went ahead and like splurged for me. And I'm just so thankful, not because like it's a really nice expensive bag, but because like he knew that I wanted it for so long. I just couldn't quite get myself to treat myself. I was just like, no, like I can't rationalize this. And he helped to absolutely spoil me and it's just so sweet. So yeah, it's my baby. I'll show it to you one more time. Just in case, you know, just in case you wanted to see her again. My next worst purchase is not glamorous, but it has to be my pots and pans, y'all. These are tragic. I just literally went to like TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Home Goods, and found the cheapest pots and pans that I could get. This is very, very similar to the table I was telling you about where you use pots and pans every single day, like get real deal good stuff that is gonna be easy to clean up and all that jazz. Don't get the cheap thing that's gonna last for six months. Go all in and have pots and pans for the rest of your dang life, okay? Okay. My next best purchase is my most recent commitment um, and that is my workout classes. They are, so expensive, I'm not even gonna lie to your face. I don't even wanna tell you how much they are a month because it's like embarrassing to me. Um, but it is like changing my life for the better So in so many aspects. And is that priceless? I mean, maybe, you know? <laughs> 
Okay, we're friends, so just don't judge me. So every month I pay $250, I know it's insane, for <laughs> um, unlimited Pilates reformer machine classes. And I love it, I have to say, it is so worth it. It is literally the best purchase I've ever made, I think. And I'll give you three reasons why. Number one, when I'm spending that dang much on working out, rest assured, I'm gonna work out. And they also charge you, I think it's like $15 if you don't show up for class um, that you signed up for. So <laughs> you know my butt is getting out of bed, rain or shine. Reason number two is that why is my finger, why are my fingers so far apart? You would have thought I would have been like, but I did like. Reason number two is that I have gone into a better schedule for my life. Uh, I take my class every morning at 8 a.m. So I am done by nine something in my car, back headed home, and I can start work at 9.30. Uh, so it's really gotten me on a more specific schedule every single day because working from home for myself, it can be very easy to say, oh, I'll do that in 30 minutes. Oh, I'll work out at the end of the day. Um, but starting my day every day when I'm done working out by 9 a.m., like, what more can I ask for? Last but not least, mentally and physically, I just feel better. I feel like, not even like disregarding what my body looks like, I just feel stronger physically and healthier physically. Like I can go run a marathon and, I mean maybe not a marathon, but you know. And it just, it's it's been pushing myself and giving myself a challenges and goals every week and like, it just feels good. It's the first time I can honestly say I've ever enjoyed working out. I think it's incredibly important to find uh, what type of workout you actually like. And I used to think like, cause I've heard people say that before and I used to think like, well, what if you just hate working out? But I do truly believe that you can find something that you really do enjoy. It took me like, all through college, I did Zumba, I, I did just regular working out, like the elliptical. I tried a bunch of different things, but I just always despised it, and now I finally like it. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking about this, I'm sorry. Rounding out my worst financial decisions in my 20s uh, is kind of different. It's actually putting off a purchase. Uh, it's not really a purchase, but you'll get it once I say it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. And that is starting to invest in a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA, um, something like that. And I did learn about this stuff in college, but also like I am no financial investor, clearly because I haven't done this yet. Um, it's something that I want to talk to Daniel about, talk to my dad about, talk to my friends about. Some friends, if like they put in a thousand, then their company that they work for will match it and also put in a thousand. Like I don't have something like that. Um, it's all by myself and I think I just haven't quite had the, the discipline to set money aside. Uh, for this and it's, I, I regret it because I do have money and savings that I could easily put into that and I'm not really sure why I haven't done that yet. I think I just, whenever I think about it, I get overwhelmed and I'm like, well, I don't even know what that is fully. Do I really understand what that is? Like, I don't really know like how I would even get a Roth IRA. Like, do I go to my bank? Like, I don't know how it works. Um, so that is something that I am going to do this year without a doubt. Um, I want to max out a Roth IRA every single year for my retirement for the future. Or there's something called a 401k. Um, I don't know much about this stuff. Clearly I need to do my research. I'm not pretending to know about it. I don't know about it. Uh, but I highly recommend if you are in your 20s or older and you don't have these things that I am discussing, um, look into it. Talk to your parents about it. Talk to your friends about it. Talk to your sister about it. Whoever it may be. Not me, because I don't know anything. Uh, but talk to someone about it so that you can be sure that you are financially set up. I know this is like more of a boring thing, but it's really, really important. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, babes, that is everything. I genuinely hope that you enjoyed today's video, that it was helpful and informative, hopefully. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed today's video. Give it a thumbs up and pop over to my Instagram. I will have a link in the description box down below. Uh, we're, we're doing some really great things over there. All right, I love you guys, and until next time, I'll see you soon. Bye.